Hi all, welcome on Travels and Code channel. Today we will talk about the React Context API and how can we use it and uh, why do we need to use, use it. So this uh, feature completely remove Redux and uh, we do not need any more to use and learn Redux. So today what we are going to use. We will create simple project using create React app then we will use React context and uh, also we will use two hooks. It's use context and use redu reducer hooks. It's they are very popular hooks and uh, it, they will help, uh, help us to implement this functionality. Create React app, it's a tool to, for generating a React application. We will use it. And uh, in the end, we expect to receive a simple application like this or something similar. Uh, here we can increase our counter and decrease our counter and uh, change some information. And here we will have a couple of components on different layers and uh, we can get data on any layer of our application. To read more about context, you can open official documentation on React. It's React Context HTML. And uh, here you can read everything what you need. It's very useful information. So when you watch the video, I recommend you to go to this site and check the latest updates in React Context. And about this application, right now it looks very simple and boring, but don't worry. In the next videos, we will add here internationalization and uh, themes and uh, everything, everything will be stored in context and uh, then this application will be much more interesting. So if you do not want to miss these new functionality updates, uh, don't forget to subscribe on the channel and uh, so let's start. Without any dependencies or already implemented some functionality, so you can follow this instruction and implement the same functionality in your application. We are ready, everything is installed and we have commands here on start. So let's open our project in WebStorm. So here we have our project and we can run it directly from WebStorm. So let's call here on start. Okay, we have application. It's a basic React application from the scratch. We can clean it up, but I don't want to waste a lot of time. Okay, so let's start. First of all, we need to create our context. So let's create a folder. And uh, yes. And uh, here we will create new file. It will be default. It will be default context. Okay, what is context? Context is the state of our application. It's a data which represent uh, what is our application, how it looks and which data it operates with. So right now we, we will create simple state. It will be just object with uh, one information, with one simple information. It's object with um, counter zero, for example. And it's everything what we need. Also we need to export this object. So we ex exported it. So we have this object. The next one, what we need, we need to change somehow this state. So if we have counter, we can increase and incre decrease the value. So here we will create new file. It will be index. And uh, let's create a function, function reducer, which will change this state. Okay, small. So Preferences. We are using we are using React and um, do not want strict mode. Okay, it's a function reducer and uh, it receives two parameters: its state, it's a, our current state, and action. It's what we need. And uh, here we can create some functionality. We will use switch operator. So what do we have here? First of all, it's uh, action type. It's a special word which we are using for clarifying types and um, you have to use it. And it, uh, it's a string, string value which uh, describes uh, action, what we are going to do. In our case, it's increase. So when we increase, we want to return a new object with the same state, completely the same state, but with uh, updated uh, parameter counter, it will be increased. 
Why do we need it? In this case, we return new object and uh, we do not mutate previous one. Why we need it? Because um, from performance perspective, we do not need to compare two objects and here we are using a shallow comp comparing. So links, links are different, we checked links, they are different, so it means that it's another object and we need the render application or change state. Uh, if uh, we, we, use, we will use the same object, uh, we need to check uh, the whole fields inside uh, and it might take a lot of time. Okay, another case we want to decrease. So we, we will turn the same. Okay, and uh, one more, it will be reset. For example, if we want to remote, uh, go to the initial state. And here we want to turn our default state. Okay, but we don't have it, so let's import our default state. Okay, now we have our state and we can ch change it. Let's create uh, first our React context and we will use it next. We need import React. Also, we need the uh, create context, context function. And let's create this context. We will call it up context, but you can call it as you want, it doesn't matter. So we create, we call create context and uh, it should work right now. Okay, we have context. In context we have two, we have two parts. It's, it's context provider and context consumer. So in our case we need to create a provider for application, for our application. Let's uh, implement it. Okay, here we are using Qs reducer hook. Let's import it from React. So it receives two, two parameters. The first one is a function reducer, which will change our application state. And the second one, it's a default state. Default state, it's our state we created here. And it returns two, two properties. It's state and dispatch. State, it's a new state updated after execution of this function. And dispatch, it's a function to call this uh, reducer function with a new action. We will create one more fun one more variable, it will be value. It will be object of state and dispatch and uh, this component return up context provider as value it receives value. It's an object with state and dispatch. We will call it and inside we will have uh, children. It means that uh, we can wrap any component with uh, this provider and uh, this component will have access to our context and we, it can use it. Okay, the next one. Let's create consumer. And we need to export it. So we export up context, uh, we export up context consumer and the context provider. Okay, so how can we use it? We have uh, our provider and uh, in our case we need to uh, wrap uh, the whole application. We wrap the whole application to use this uh, provider and use this state. So let's go to index.js. Here we have our app application. Let's import from context and uh, we will wrap our application with this provider. And uh, now this section is finished. We, we already wrapped the whole application in context provider. And now we, in this component, it's up component, we have access to our state and uh, let's, let's try it. So we need, here we need the import to use context. And here in our application, 
use context and uh, here we need to uh, pr provide context so let's also import let's import uh, up context it's this context we created here let's import it and uh, we will pass us a parameter so now we have state and uh, this state and dispatch properties which are returned from a use context hook but it's not an array it's object so let's change it. let's change it to object and let, let's check uh, do we have it so here we have such information default let's delete it and uh, here we can uh, open show the state okay logo we do not need okay let's check and uh, here we have counter zero counter is our state its current state it works fine everything works fine great and uh, let's create first button to change this um, state and uh, we will call on click on click function just and let's create it and uh, here everything what we is going to do we will call dispatch function and uh, what do we want to do and here we can increase it's a it's a type we we need to pass a type of our action just just string that's it so and uh, after that uh, reducer function will be executed and this section will be called and uh, it will update state when state will be updated we can re-render our application react will re-render application and uh, here we will see new state value so let's check it so here we have a button doesn't work Okay, let's check why it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work because we need pass object. Yeah. And here we pass increase. So don't forget uh, that uh, here we pass object type and uh, here it's action action type increase so now it should work okay let's check and here we see that it works when we click state is updated and uh, now the data is saved in the global state here and uh, we can change it okay to, ch to show how it works inside let's create some component create directory components and uh, create a component for example decreaser so we need import and we will export some component Okay, so let's continue and we'll create this component. Also here we need to import use context. And here we will import our context. It's up context. So here we have a button, let's uh, return decrease and uh, let's try is it does it work in our application we can uh, import here let's try okay this button we will add uh, this component 
Let's rebuild. Yes, because here we need this type of braces. Okay. And here we have button decrease, but right now it doesn't work. So to do it works, we need to use the context. So again, we need this patch from use context up context. So now we have function dispatch, which we will call our action. And uh, here we can call it on, on click button, on click event. Also don't forget type and the key it will be decrease. So now we have our up context. When we click on this button, it should decrease value. Let's check. So we can increase and we can decrease. So as you see, we have access to our context from any component in your application. Is it up? the main, main component or it's some another component we created just to show how it works. So I guess that's it to show how it work, how works uh, context uh, API. And one more, what I want to show, why do we use, why did we use um, such approach when we, um, when we return new, when we return current state and then change some property. But uh, here we could uh, just return something like uh, this one and uh, it will be fine because we get new object. But uh, what if we're going to change our state and add new properties? For example, name, here my name, we added this uh, new, new property in our state. And uh, now if we will check, here we have our state we can decrease, increase value, but uh, we don't need to change our reduce function, reducer, because uh, previously we returned all our state and then just uh, changed uh, that field we needed. And uh, it's a good practice to use it specifically for what you needed. Okay, that's it, I guess. Uh, thank you for watching.